Today we are going to be talking to you about the film movement of German Expressionism. And first, we're going to tell you about some of the context and history of German Expressionism and exactly what it is. So for that, we have to go back to just before the First World War. <laughs> German Expressionism refers to a number of related creative movements beginning in Germany before the First World War that reached a peak in Berlin during the 1920s. German Expressionism is a film movement that emphasises on the expression of inner thoughts and emotions through the control of stylistic elements. The film movement, having born directly under the influence of German's defeat during World War I, was an expressive form used to describe the mentality of defeat nation stricken with poverty and anger. These type of films were confined to Germany during World War I, as it was a very isolated country during the war, and the government banned foreign films. Because of the ban on imported films, Germany grew in the film industry and became part of the international film industry. The themes extreme anti-realism in cinema only lasted a few years, however the themes of realism were integrated into later films around the 20s. The demand from theatres to generate films led to an increase in domestic film production, from 24 in 1914 to 130 in 1918. With inflation also on the rise, Germans were attending films more freely because they knew that their money's value was constantly diminishing. These are some of the distinguishing features of film form and style. The first expressionist films made up for a lack of lavish budget by using set designs with widely non-realistic geometrically ab absurd angles along with designs painted on walls and floors to represent lights, shadows and objects. Distorted shapes and lines in set designs that counter the sense of balance, heavy shadowing, along with theatrical actor movements are practiced in German Expressionism to suggest a warped or, or prevented perspective of the world. The story world is twisted as a reflection of the storyteller's emotional state. Expressionist films often employ flat lighting to stress the connection between the characters and the decor. As the contrast and imbalance in the visual elements suggest, the characters are trapped and ruled by their madness, revolt, self-analysis and primitive sexual savagery. The distinguishing features in terms of character, narrative and theme. The plots and stories of the expressionist films often dealt with madness, insanity, betrayal and other intellectual topics triggered by the experiences of World War I. Two genres that were especially influenced by expressionism are horror and film noir. German expressionist films are therefore notable for their dark themes of insanity, horror, death and fatality that translate prevalently into the film's mise-en-scene and narrative. It counters the principle of realism and practices extreme distortion and means to communicate in an emotional reality. What you can see in front of you now is a list of some of the most important and most influential films in German Expressionism. A film like The Student of Prague by Stellan Rye in 1913 was one of the most important films in German Expressionism. Due to the time it was made, it is seen as one of the films that kicked off German Expressionism and influenced films in the future such as Dr Caligari by Robert Wan in 1920 and Nosferatu by F.W. Warnow in 1922. The Legacy and Influence on World Cinema German silent cinema was arguably far ahead of cinema in Hollywood. As well as the direct influence of filmmakers who moved from Germany to Hollywood, developments in style and technique which were developed for expressionism in Germany impressed contemporary filmmakers from elsewhere and were incorporated into their work and so into the body of international cinema from the 1930s onwards. A good example of this process can be found in the career of the British director Alfred Hitchcock. In 1924, Hitchcock was sent by his film company Gainsborough Pictures to work as an assistant director and art director at the UFA Babelsberg Studios in Berlin on the film The Black Guard. An immediate effect of the working environment there can be seen in his expressionistic set designs for The Black Guard. The influence can also be seen throughout the rest of Hitchcock's career. In his third film, The Lodger, Hitchcock introduced expressionist set designs, lighting techniques and trick cam work such as the image of a man walking across a glass floor shot from below, a concept representing someone pacing upstairs. 
to the British public against the wishes of his studio. In his later films, this influence continued for his visual experimentation. For example, in his shower scene from Psycho, Norman Bates' blurred image seen for a shower cone is reminiscent of Nosferatu shown through his shadow.